Hey guys, um, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Tanya, I'm in my 50s, and I uh, dedicate my uh, time to um, do uh, social media influencing on certain topics or subjects, shall I say, uh, one of which is cyberbullying. Um, I'll get straight to the point. I would like to talk about cyberbullying because I kind of feel that there is no much awareness out there. It's not being spoken out there as it should be and addressed um, properly. Um, it is um, a very hateful crime and um, cyberbullying, to my understanding, is uh, totally um, different than any other bullying. Um, and I'm not going to talk just about uh, children. Adults are as equally suffering from this um, crime. Um, I would like to have more like engagement with you, you know, so I, I don't know how this spacing thing works. Um, this is my very, very first time I've done this. And I don't know if you can interact with me. Um, if you can, then you're welcome to, because that makes things better. Um, so, what is cyberbullying? I'm sure most of us are already familiar with uh, this term. Basically, it means bullying done um, over the internet. Um, so, um, it's actually a psychological attack on a person or persons. So, that can be a child, group of children, very rarely, but um, usually it's just one individual and um, a child or an adult. It is important that we talk about this. And it is important to to um, take steps to um, prevent harm being done from cyber bullies. Um, I would say that we cannot stop it. You know, um, it's difficult crime to tackle. Uh, it's not like the FBI and the law enforcement are tackling uh, drug lines and, you know, they have sniffed dogs and this and that and, you know, they've got tip lines and everything. With cyberbullying, this is totally different. Usually only the person who is suffering is the one who knows this is going on. And it's for the parent when it comes to a child or uh, for the adult to seek help and for parents to, to um, realise, to suss out the situation that this is what is going on with the child, I've got to do something about it. So, I would like to talk about um, not just preventing harm being done to a child or an adult, but to how we can prevent cyberbullying by um, educating our children from very young age on this topic um, and teach them against cyberbullying so hopefully they are not going to end up to grow into their adolescence and become the cyberbully. So you are going to help in both ways to prevent your child being cyberbullied and to prevent your child becoming a cyberbully. So, um, I, I think we should, well, if I say we should try and understand why cyberbullying is going on, no, we can't understand it. It's unacceptable. Whoever is doing cyberbullying, they, they think they've got a reason, yeah? And no, they don't have a reason. They're doing it for their own satisfaction and for their own 
good attitude. So, um, what can you do to to help? Um, if you are an adult who is out there and you are suffering from cyberbullying, there are help lines that you can call um, anonymously, the Dabi, or you can, you know, uh, talk, you can say your name and you can get help. You can um, look out for, you can speak to your uh, doctor. They are very good at uh, pointing you in the right direction. Um, it's part of what they do, and they can help you find help. I look out for leaflets at doctor surgeries, at um, schools, um, such um, town halls, um, council halls, council buildings. They're very good at having leaflets on this um, subject. So. Um, let's talk about more um, on uh, um, children and how you can uh, um, figure out that there might be some potential cyberbullying going on with your child. Um, what, what you need to do is you need to observe your child and monitor. And if you see any of these... Um, signs then you need to then go further in turn and and dig in deep to find out if there is cyberbullying going on so what you're looking at you're looking at, at drastic changes into your child's behavior such as becoming depressed spending more time in the rooms behind the bedroom door ignoring or avoiding to mix up with relatives and spend time on gatherings, find excuses not to join gatherings in your family, at your house or outdoor. Um, when uh, interrupted, they will suddenly shut the lid of the laptop, shut the... Um, iPod or their phone, they will normally hide their phone and be very protective over it. Um, there are reasons, many reasons why a child would keep this to themselves and not tell you it. And one of the most common reasons are that the child is blaming you as a parent for being cyberbullied. So this is quite disturbing, but unfortunately it is the case. Uh, it, it is true. So um, the child might think it's your fault for bringing him into this world, you know, and they might find it easier to deal with it by uh, grudging you, um, which could also mean that instead of your child being uh, not just depressed and going into deeper and deeper depressions, but being aggressive, becoming aggressive towards you. And what you need to do is um, you also need to, uh, when, when cyberbullying is going on, this is, um, like I mentioned before, it's a psychological attack on the person and this person is so um, put in the corner that they can't find a way out of it and mentally um, they are um, suffering to the point where most of them think of taking their lives. So um, pretty much uh, most of the children would document this and when they feel at the lowest point would normally write a note either that be in the diary either that be on a, just a little piece of paper and these notes you can find by searching the room when they're not present so go in there get in the room look 
and look, look in and the drawers and the cabinets and the mattresses. Oh, that's my dog. <laughs> He's very good, devoted, but he's an interrupter. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so look out for these knots because when they write these knots, they forget about it and it gives them some comfort, okay? Okay? And then when they forget about it, this is where you might be able to find one and confirm that your child is suffering and is being uh, cyberbullied. So what happens is when they're feeling at their best, they will change their mind and go back and find the note, take it, destroy it. And then when they feel at the lowest, they will write a new one. So also check in um, clothes in the cupboard, folded clothes in between, check your pockets, check the shoes, inside shoes, inside boots, um, anything in, in anywhere, check behind the curtain rail, um, on top of a light lampshade, inside a lampshade, just, just thoroughly search your child's room. Um, this could, could really be helpful, yeah. So, what happened and what do you do when you've confirmed that, yes, oh my gee, my child is suffering from cyberbullying. You've got to sit back, recalculate, and then think or find help from professionals straight away to be able to know how to approach a child and how to talk about it. So, and from there, um, you can take things. You can you can take you you can lead the situation, and your child will feel more comfortable when they see uh, they have your help. They have you. You've got this. You're protecting them. You know. Um, other things you can do are uh, you can. Um, I think um, distraction is a good way of uh, preventing cyberbullying from going on. So, what you can, the things you can do to distract the cyberbullying are many. First of all, apply parental control on your provided by your internet service provider, which is usually online into your account, logging just about an on off put it on, it's done. Or the best way to do this is, if you don't know how to do it, log into your router, access your router, or get someone who knows this. Inside the router, there's parental control. And this is more in-depth parental control where you can actually apply certain hours where a child cannot access internet at all. But we have a problem. Children these days have mobiles and we like to buy a family pack, you know, from a network provider and at a good price, at a lower cost. And we have unlimited internet on our uh, mobile uh, phones. So um, when, when we're doing this, this is not going to stop your child from accessing the internet because they've got their mobile. So what you need to start doing is thinking of um, confiscating their mobile overnight, but with their knowledge why you're doing this, okay? So it's not like you're being naughty, you didn't deserve to have your mobile phone. You, you, you explain to your child in a gentler way that it's for their own good and they'll be fine, it will go away. Now... Other things you can do is to distract this type of bullying going on is um, get him a pet. Get your child a pet. You know, this is a good way where they can be occupied with something new. Give their love and get that love back. You know, it's an excellent way of distraction and get your child away from all this situation and, and recovery from cyberbullying and that gives you the opportunity to um, have your child more around the house, 
rather than him being shut behind the um, bedroom door and you can more you can interact more with your child other things you can do is you can start um again um do more interactions put them in the kitchen while you're washing the dishes they can unless you got dishwasher <laughs> I have one, but um, I don't often use it sometimes. I just like to wash dishes by hand. So you can have a child to dry the dishes or, you know, um, give them a task to do. Um, just try and keep them around the family area, right? Uh, socializing with the family or that be doing their homework. So, um, what... What you need to do is just prevent your child from spending uh, more time on their own in the in the bedroom, because um, this is important. It's critical. Every time they can get the opportunity to check on the bully, on the cyber bully, they will do it, and they will wonder if they've gone away. Yeah, so. When you start educating your child on this, and you start, um, and your child starts believing in you that that they are who they are, they're beautiful as they are. They, you know, you can tell your child as much as you want that they are um, beautiful inside out. You love them to bits. You do anything for them, but when they're going through this psychological attack. They have not got that ability to uh, soak it up, to to understand all this, and to to um to absorb it, yeah. Um, and they will normally um take for granted what the cyberbullying is saying to them. Okay. Oh, I have a cough, so I'm gonna. Um... Let me mute this so I can have a call. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> I just had the massive cough. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, let me find myself. What was that? Where was I at? Okay. Um, I don't work by notes, so I've got nothing in front of me but my recording. Good. So. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's about engagement, more engagement. But, um, the other things you can do is um, you can get... Um, oh, no, this cough is coming again. I think I might need a drink. One moment. Oh, wow, got my diet Pepsi. Oh, can you hear that whizzing? Mm. Nice. Right. You can also start at a very young age to get your child used to um, uh, taking pictures, selfies with families on their own. Um, showing themselves out there, um, you know, loving the fact that they're in the picture, um, videos as well, video memories, get the child to watch it, watch it with them often. Oh, look, look when you were, oh, look when you were three, look when you were five, look when you're seven, and how cute, how, oh, and things like that, so they can get used to loving themselves the way they are get that confidence in themselves mm -hmm. so and then start how do you <laughs> this is difficult I mean it's easy to say but how do you start educating your child and when do you do this when is a child ready to be approached to talk about cyberbullying to them right 
Well, this is something you can ask psychologists or you can judge it by yourself. To my honest opinion, this is probably the best time is when the child starts asking questions about social lives and looks and, you know, um, for example, a girl might say, oh, mommy, when can I start wearing a makeup and stuff like that, you know. So you can judge for yourself when your child is ready to be approached on this subject. And educate the child both ways, like I said. Why is cyberbullying bad? And why they should never do it? And why they should never pay attention to it? And why should they never, ever um, fall into the trap of a, a psychological predator out there who's got nothing better do, to do than, than prey on, on victims that are um, mentally um, unstable or all even if they are stable, they, 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 they like to make them feel unstable. So your child would then grow out to be very confident um, uh, adolescent. And and then you you will have pride in, in your in, in doing this for your child, you know. And your child can be safe, you can be safe, and you can sleep well, so can your child. So, uh, I really think we should um, address this uh, cyberbullying out there. And, you know, I, I know we all love entertainment. I know we all like to sit on our Twitter or log into our any social media, you know, see a little laughter, you know, entertainment and such. But this subject are oh, a serious matter, okay? And a need to be shared and talked about it, need to be addressed, need to be made aware. People need to know this, you know. Um, we need to keep it out there, right? And I really don't think much is done about it. I mean, I research on Twitter how many people have tried to to raise awareness on, on cyberbullying and how many accounts are there that are just dead, you know. And it seemed like to me, and I'm thinking, oh, bless. And I'm just instantly thinking, were, they, were these people actually victims of cyberbullying? I wanted to speak out. And there's that, you know, oh, nobody's listening to me, nobody's seeing my tweets. There's loads of that, but nothing active. Well, I haven't seen anything that is active. I mean, I go on my, um, I, I only follow certain topics as a social media influencer. And new to this, obviously. I have, I have uh, very carefully... Um, adjusted my settings in my Twitter, what I see and what I don't see. So there are subjects I, I'm not interested in, so, and I don't follow. And um, I might be wrong, but my research, is, and my research is telling me there is not much done about cyberbullying. So I am asking you, fellows, to help me spread the word out there. I am asking you, as a parent, or as a single adult to share what I do and support my um uh, you know activity at what I do. So all for free by you know retweeting with a quote without a quote um liking and commenting, getting interactive on my uh, Twitter posts. So, and following my uh, Twitter. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to wrap it up now. I'll be back. I'll keep my spaces going. Um, I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think. This is my very first piece I've done. <laughs> I mean, I like to say this, you know, um, I live in the United Kingdom, I'm in my 50s, but 
I've lived here for 27 years now. And before I arrived here, from where I come from, from abroad, I was actually hosting in the radio station. I had my own uh, program, uh, radio program, podcast that I was uh, airing at midnight. And I just had that going on till about five o'clock in the morning. And we were just talking on, you know, certain topics. And it was it was wonderful. You get people calling in live, you know. We'll connect the listeners. And it was just wonderful. I really enjoyed it. Um, I was also part of a TV uh, crew. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, um, I love being out there talking to people and, you know, um, sharing opinions and it helps, you know. We don't all, we don't always know everything, do we? Um, but, uh, yeah, certain topics needs um, uh, to be flagged out there and followed and discussed and shared and let's do this together. Thanks for listening, MySpace. Uh, and um, God bless.